Hey guys, so I don't know if you know this by now because this video has 5 years how to consistently make profitable eating games uh, by Breaks Yourself Games, so it's the creator it's from the creator of Cadence of Hyrule and Crypt of the Necrodancer and all those riven nice roguelike games the Brace Yourself games and it has 5 years and it's a very lengthy video so in this video we're going to show how to use ChatGPT to summarize it and also talk about its summary. Again, if you want to watch it in full glory, you can watch it here, but if you want to watch a 10 times smaller version, stick around. So the first thing you need to do, you need to have a paid plan on ChatGPT, so you can utilize plugins, and then you would need to install this plugin, VoxScript. And once that's done, uh, which is quite simple, by the way, you just need to say, hey, make a summary of this video, and you'll see this a lot, the longer the video is, and since it's a very long video, you'll see this a lot. And now let's talk about what it says and pair it with what I remember from this video from a while ago. Designing a game with hooks. Ryan emphasized the importance of designing a game with hooks, which are unique, compelling features that make a game stand out. These hooks can be in the form of gameplay, art, music, or any other aspect. So the idea here that he's trying to say is that, for take for example, Crypt of the Necrodancer. It's a roguelike, but also a rhythm game. So that's the type of hook he mentions. Something uh, twist, a mix of ideas that seem disparate, but when combined together makes for something intriguing. That's the first tip he goes about for like five minutes to tell you about. After this, understanding the market. Ryan suggests analyzing the market to understand the types of games that are successful and why, including a target audience, competition, potential for profitability. So what he's saying here is that he used a lot of those tools like Sting Spy. Ah, this, by the way, is still about hooks. So this is what he means. And he used Sting Spy and a lot of others that you can check on the video to check on the popularity of some things. So on survival, on walking simulators. So this was from 2013 to 2016, but he really advise on the importance of doing something that's at least not dying in terms of popularity because then you you know fight a you'll fight a much more uphill battle than you would otherwise the third point is promoting the game so promotion is a crucial part using trailers attending festivals and conventions and leveraging press etc yes that's true and i really believe in the power of <coughs> the power of game trailers and game gifs and promoting your game, and if you don't know anything about that, I'll put a link to a video of mine where you can check how to easily promote your game in a very fun way. I'll put it over here at the top in the right. The next point that he talks about is that ideas are extremely valuable and should be guarded jealously. He suggests evaluating game ideas based on their hooks. Start okay, so this point is more, more or less making a short summary, you know, like more or less here, test your hooks, etc. Uh, it, it's a growth-based mindset, to be honest, hence the name, Growth for Games, because you don't want to spend years on an idea just to find out it's bad, it's not going to stick. If you can spend weeks or even days with a prototype to check things, it's always better because you're going to fail a lot before hitting something nice. Using early access is a double-edged sword because it can gather a lot of feedback and improve the game, but when it comes to the launching, it will be a little bit smaller due to the early game. He talks about this more or less here in the 37 minute mark. So that's more or less what he sees when you do an early access. You get a lot of attention early on, but when you finally release your game, you usually don't doesn't get as much attention as you would before, or at least you have to put in a l way more effort than you did. So consider that. And finally, think long term. So Build a reputation. Uh, this ties in with the growth mindset that you need to test a lot and improve a lot over time because the harsh truth is that even if you do everything correctly here, you design a game with a nice hook, it's in a nice market that, that's not dying and ideally is growing. You promote your game flawlessly, you use your access, etc. It doesn't exactly guarantee you make a profitable in the game, it just guarantees that if you stick to it, and if you make two, three, four, five in games, you'll be consistent in making profit with those games. So 
yeah, that's the summary of the video. I'll put this in the video description, of course, so you can check it out by yourself. But yeah, and also I really advocate for ChatGPT. If you can, uh, for now it's only available in the plus version, but something like Vox Script, for example, is being a lifesaver in summarizing videos. And if you want, also comment below on how I, I've been using this exact plugin to summarize some tutorials. So if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.